Excellencies, dear friends, on behalf of the Green Climate Fund, I would like to deeply thank the organizers for inviting me to say a few words on climate action through climate tech and the key role of women on the path to climate neutrality at the 2021 Leeds Today Shape Tomorrow event. We are not on track to achieve climate neutrality by 2050 to avoid catastrophic climate change. The past decade was the hottest on record. The drop in carbon dioxide emissions from coronavirus lockdowns in 2020 will have a negligible effect on the build-up of greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere. Global temperature never exceeded the pre-industrial value by more than 2 degrees Celsius over the past 3 million years. The period which has seen the emergence of our species Homo sapiens and its instinct for bearers. Based on existing trends, we could cross this threshold early during the second half of this century. Even if we were to stop greenhouse gas emission today, we are already committed to significant climate damage. Climate impacts are materializing faster than expected. For example, 20 years ago, we were not expecting threat to the survival of unique ecosystems to materialize before a global average temperature increase of 4 to 6 degrees Celsius. Today, we fear that a 2 degrees Celsius increase in mean global temperature could wipe out 90% of coral reef and endanger the security and economic livelihood of hundreds of millions of people. So, how can we get back on track and break these negative trends? Innovation is an essential part of the answer. History shows that trends are not a certainty and can be broken with innovation. A single institutional innovation at the turn of the 19th century the limited stock company allowed early innovators and industrialists to pool resources and finance the railways and factories of our free industrial revolutions. Another key innovation during the same period was the emergence of the concept of human rights. It fostered investment in education and social reform that drove further innovation. It took place against the background of Malthus' essay on the, on the principle of population that theorized in 1798 that population will expand until growth will be stopped or reversed by disease, famine, or war. This dire outlook was echoed by Paul Ehrlich in his 1968 book, The Population Bomb, which predicted mass starvation in the 1970s and 80s. However, the second wave of the women's rights movement was also gathering steam at the time the population bomb got published. It diffused the population bomb by providing new space for women to pursue careers and choose to have fewer or no children. Today, educating girls and sexual and reproductive rights remain two of the most powerful initiatives to avoid catastrophic climate change. Innovation in digital technology and artificial intelligence, material technology, nanotechnology, genetic technology, robotics, biotechnology, transport technology, and energy technology, to name just a few, have also the potential to provide humankind with new fundamental capabilities and rewrite our future. For example, a technological breakthrough in solar paint or electric storage technology alone could overhaul our energy system in a matter of years. But innovation does not always materialize on time and cannot be taken for granted. History is littered with examples of techno-optimist goals that could not be achieved. For example, when a series of Clean Air Acts were passed in Europe and the United States in the 1960s, 1970s, it was expected that the incentives provided by this legislation to develop green technologies would solve clean air pollution problem in these geographies within a decade. Half a century later, local air pollution has yet to be solved, and much more severe global air pollution concerns have arisen with ozone depletion and climate change. Even if innovation materializes on time, it can create new unforeseen problems on its own. When the CFC's refrigerants were developed in the 1920s, they were touted as a safe substitute 
for the explosive and toxic ammonia and sulfur refrigerants then commonly in use. But half a century later, we discovered that they were posing an existential threat to life on Earth through the destruction of the ozone layer. Innovation does not benefit all equally either. Notably, it does not benefit the poor and the rich, women and men equally. The second industrial revolution was driven by electricity. But for the 1.1 billion people worldwide who still lack access to electricity, it might as well have never happened. Similarly, innovation can entrench inequality and discrimination. Addressing the gender gap between men and women farmers in access to land, information, technology, finance and market is an extremely powerful solution to address malnutrition, poverty and foster climate resilient agriculture. However, a review of about 300 agricultural added value apps currently in the market to foster green smart agriculture showed that very few of them were considering the specific gender barriers that women face. By being gender blind, they were de facto failing half of their intended customer, perpetuating gender inequalities and empowering efforts to shape a sustainable tomorrow. The reason for this gender blindness is simple. Only 6% of app developers are women. And the situation is unlikely to soon get better on its own. In 2011, only 0.4% of female students plan to major in computer sciences, compared with 6.7% in 1983. In the high tech industry, the quit rate is more than twice as high for women at 41% than for men at 17%. Furthermore, women make up only 4% or 20 of all CEOs across 500 companies. Of these 20 women, five only are in the high tech related industries. Technology does not have a mind of its own. Human have agency, not technology. Technologies are embedded in a social context and it is a policy framework that we put in place that will determine whether innovation will materialize on time and benefit all or only a few. For example, autonomous vehicle could remove 80% of private-owned cars from the street. The vast areas of urban lands currently occupied by parking lots could be redeveloped to increase the resilience of urban areas to climate change. But the actual result could be dramatically different. As the cost of traveling with autonomous vehicle drops, people could abandon public transportation, leading to an actual increase in the number of vehicles in the city. Even worse, the technology might not materialize on time, but still induce policymakers to postpone public transport projects, arming women, children, and the elderly who rely disproportionately on public transportation. The Green Climate Fund recognizes the critical importance of innovation to scale up climate action. But we also understand that barrier to innovation may prevent it from succeeding. A key focus of the Green Climate Fund is, therefore, to accelerate and scale up green inclusive innovation. By doing so, we aim to foster a paradigm shift toward low emission climate resilient development in developing countries. How do we accelerate and scale up innovation? And how can these efforts both reduce climate risk and promote gender equality? We know that there is a long way to go from a brilliant idea to a scalable technology that works for all. So GCF has adopted a four-pronged approach to meet this goal. Our first prong is to support transformational planning and programming. Our capacity to scale up climate action through climate tech and to foster solutions that benefit all is undermined by barriers that constrain the role of women innovators and leaders. The GCF is the largest dedicated climate fund in the world. We can provide support to countries in crafting and implementing integrated policy measures to remove barriers to women leadership in climate tech. We can range from gender-responsive education programs to the promotion of organizational norms and social services that reduce women's quit rate in tech or dedicated financing lines. Next, 
we focus on catalyzing innovation, climate innovation. GCF invests in new technologies, business models and practices to establish a proof of concept. A key objective of our environmental and social safeguards and gender policy are to ensure that the fund exclusively promotes inclusive climate innovation. GCF is currently reviewing several incubator and private equity fund initiatives to better target and support women innovators and entrepreneurs in the global south. Thirdly, GCF de-risk investment to catalyze private finance and scale up successful innovation. Every single project funded by the Green Climate Fund to mobilize finance at scale includes a gender action plan. This action plan sets out how the project is to empower and benefit women. As of today, GCF ongoing investment are expected to benefit over 180 million women. For example, GCF is supporting the efforts of Bosnia-Herzegovina to scale up investment in low carbon building. A key objective of the project is to strengthen the capacity of women entrepreneurs and women-led SMEs to drive this new green building market. Notably, the project is to train women energy auditors and building inspectors, women architects in green climate resilient infrastructure design, and women engineers in biomass manufacture, boiler manufacturing and maintenance. Finally, we aim to share knowledge about what works to facilitate the uptake of good practices and deliver systemic changes. For example, our Low Carbon Business Development Loans program in Mongolia specifically targets women-led enterprises, providing them with access to finance to invest in energy efficiency and renewable energy. The experience gained there with our project partner, Asbank, will enable us to develop better climate financing models in the future that promote gender equality and scale up climate ambitions. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that the world is not on track to achieve the climate and social goals we have set ourselves in the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and in the Paris Agreement. But I am optimistic that through innovation, innovation led by women and men, and that benefits women and men equally, we can change the strengths and shape tomorrow. GCF is certainly ready to play its part. Thank you very much for your attention.